Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm, I'm Kamlesh Ravlani. And the topic for the session is uh, large scale product development. I'm going to present a case study from the work I did uh, with a company in New York some time back. So I, I double checked with them. They're like, OK, it's not secret anymore, so go ahead. <laughs> so cool. Uh, a quick, uh, I would like to understand who's here uh, in terms of your size in uh, product development. So can we all uh, stand up and position ourselves in the room? Okay. If your team size is about the, the team that you work with, lead, coach, train, um, about 10 team members, okay, product development team size 10, and 1,000 on that side, that side of the room. Okay, so if you're about say 250, 100, somewhere in the middle of the room, okay, so that would be our horizon. So if your product development team size is about 10, roughly around that, sorry, any any number of team members working on one product development, okay, so about 10 on this side, about 1,000 on that side of the room. All right, let's let's move. Yes. Yeah, please please arrange yourself. Talk to the person next to you. No, 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 no. Come on. Come 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 here. <laughs> no, it's afternoon. How can I let you sit? <laughs> afternoon. Yes. Yes. Come come this side of the room, please. Come this side of the room. All of you. Okay, how many team team uh, team members? 200. Team members, how many team members? 600, how many? 500, okay, come here. How, how many team members? Yeah, come here, come here. How about you? Those on the chairs, you need to come up. You need to come up. Yes. Yeah, come up here, here. Line up here. Because I'm going to send you for some other reason in that side of the corner. So you all got to be here, okay? How about you guys? Okay, you got a, were you negotiating? How many? <laughs> come on, please, come in, come in the front of the room, please. Okay, so roughly 10, 20, 40s, um, about 200, 300s here, and about 600 plus that side. Okay, cool, okay. Now, your closeness to code. Do you write, review, look at the code frequently, at least few times a week, this side of the room? And if you don't ever look at the code, that side of the room, okay? Versus, or any the product code, the code of the product that is being developed, whether you touch the code, write it, review it, refactor, whatever you do with the code. But if you don't do anything with the code, go to that end of the room. And if you are somewhere in the middle, okay, once in a while, that would be this side of the room. This side, closeness to code. If you touch the code few times a week, this side. If you don't, then that side of the room. OK, so this is called sociograph. And that tells us who's in the room. And most likely, what I'm, I'm going to safely assume, that all of you either lead teams, coach them to make the product development happen. OK? Safe assumption? Yeah, cool. All right. Come take your seats, please. Thank you. So a quick introduction, I'm a coach and a trainer. I uh, have been helping organizations lead large scale product development for a uh, good time now. I also conduct private and uh, public trainings on Scrum as well as LESS, which is a large scale product development. And the case study that I'm going to share today um, has elements from large scale Scrum. Okay? If you are tweeting, that's the hashtag LESSWORKS. Uh, that's my Twitter ID. All right. So yes, uh, how many of you know Less Framework? Uh, at least a, an hour or two of introduction, if you have had, please raise your hand. At least an hour or two of introduction, if you had, I would I would like to see your hands up. Okay, so about forty percent of this uh, room. 
Okay, so I, I created a, a poster for you guys. Feel free to go here. Uh, it is, this one is L, both are L. L, L, this is capital C. Uh, go ahead and download it. Uh, that should give you a good, very brief idea about the framework. Um, on this side, these are all the less rules. And you, uh, you see some uh, diagrams. Okay. Make sure you download this in 24 hours. I'm going to take, take it down after that. <laughs> That's a goodie for coming here, okay? Done writing it or taking picture of it? Yeah, it's G double O dot G L slash L capital C B B S K. All right. So a quick agenda. I'm gonna obviously talk about the large scale product development. Uh, some elements of organizational structure design. Uh, Multi-site product development. Uh, I'm going to talk about the teams that I was working with in U.S. and Ukraine, and the challenges that we had. Actually, we had number of many, many challenges. I'm going to address only a few here, depending on how much time we have. Okay. All right. So, the company Wireless Generation, uh, product development company, uh, mid-size, medium-size uh, company in New York, Brooklyn, New York. Uh, the product were product was used for online assessments of uh, school students uh, in certain grades. I'm going to omit some, bar some fine details just to uh, keep it uh, uh, good enough for that. Okay. Uh, this product was uh, being sold by this company for many, many years on uh, the traditional channels. But now they had embarked upon a new initiative which, which would enable students and teachers actually uh, to do this assessment on any of the mobile device, okay? Whether it was iPad or any of the uh, mobile device. So primarily for the students, okay, uh, for them to be able to do um, assessments on mobile as well as mobile web, but should be obvious, obviously operating system agnostic and device agnostic. So multiple device sizes should be supported by the new crop. Okay. It had obviously timeline uh, when the school uh, start, uh, year starts, uh, the school districts in US, they ha if they had to buy a product, they would buy this, they would make this decision much earlier, much before the school uh, year starts, so that all the admin and uh, installation provisioning all is done. And as soon as the school year starts, the session starts, the teachers can provision or proctor the assessments for the students at the beginning of the year. And later, uh, during mid-year and then at the end of the year, they do this assessment again to review how the student is doing on reading, math, and all those skills, okay? Basically called uh, Dibble's uh, assessment tools from USA or familiar with US education system. Okay, cool. So you might know some of the terms if your kids were in school. Uh, so this product was Dibble's next assessment. Yeah. So started with one product owner having one product backlog. Now this product had many modules okay, and each module could actually be sold separately but, but they all could exist within one product as well, depending on what the customer is buying. Okay, so for this initiative, we had all the modules in scope uh, that need to be supported on the mobile device. Now, then customer can say, instead of five, I need to only uh, buy three of them. But some customer may choose to buy all of them. So we had to uh, ensure all of these were supported. Okay, okay. so after the initial product backlog workshop that was conducted uh, with a few of the team members, the architect and the product owner, everything was put on a wall, uh, the cards on which the stories were written, and high, high level estimation was carried out, uh, a three day exercise, and after that they realized that one team is not gonna make it, because we had a specific timeline on which we had to deliver. If we miss that timeline, what's going to happen? We miss the entire year of opportunity because now school districts can't buy our product this year. 
we have to wait one more year, which is a killer. So we have to deliver. Okay. So we had to get more team members on the team so that this product could be launched on time. Okay. Now it was not about a team or two or three. We needed five to six teams. So we had few options. I had about you know forty plus new uh, developers in New York, which is a pretty easy challenge to us, isn't it? <laughs> Usually, hiring one one good team member, uh, a product developer, may take about a three months time window. Okay, uh, you could get many team members, but it wasn't the case. The team, uh, the organization had good good policies. I, I really appreciate that. I've seen with less organizations that if they were not able to find real quality product or product developers, they would rather not hire them. Instead of filling in with anybody in the team. Okay? Or move some team members from on another initiatives, which could be lower priority, and move them here because this was the bread and butter of the organization, the, the primary product for the organization. Move team members. Or maybe get some contractors, okay? So th they can work with the team and help the team with product development, or completely outsource the product development. Okay. Now, obviously, each of these have their own challenges. Okay. Keeping the timeline in the mind, hiring all the new team members was not possible because it, it, it was going to take a lot of time, and the new team members would take time to understand the product. Uh, the business uh, in the first place, okay? That was one. And developing mobile uh, applications at that time wasn't pretty pretty uh, commonplace at that time, okay? So that was a challenge to find people who would know mobile programs, okay? Who would understand what what was it it needed for it to support on iOS or Android or other uh, uh, different browsers, Safari. Now, moving team members, obviously, it wasn't easy because uh, who would say that, oh, let, all right, go ahead, take my team members? Because even other products uh, have their own uh, challenges and their timelines to meet. Uh, getting contractors uh, had their own challenges that interviewing and ability to find right uh, contractors uh, was again a challenge. Okay, So we did initiate the 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 Item number two, three, and four, Simon uh, exploring all these options at one time. Started to explore that which item, which option is going to work out well for us. Okay, we started looking into okay, can we move team members? Are there projects where we have opportunity? Even few. Um, can we get a company, um, a vendor, outsource, uh, get some contractors, or uh, outsources to a complete uh, complete product development to an organization? We started exploring all three of them. Okay, but obviously, when you are scaling, you you have other challenges. Okay, so I conduct uh, large scale product development uh, trainings, coaching, and frequently ask my groups that okay, what are your big major challenges with the scale? So these things come up. I'm not polling you right now, uh, but I think this is the uh, consensus what I have been getting. The dependencies, coordination among team members, prioritization, time differences. Uh, because people are in different places, there is a lot of risk that we need to manage. Uh, things can you know, fall. Uh, people can drop the ball. Uh, accountability, who was responsible for X and who was responsible for Y. Uh, access to customer. A customer cannot be in uh, every uh, site. Uh, conflicts, uh, integrating the large number of code changes that are happening every day. So all these changes, all these uh, challenges with the scale. Okay. So this framework came handy. Uh, we had uh, Pete Behrens uh, as an enterprise coach working with this organization uh, a, a year before this initiative started. Okay. So a lot of good work that he had done within the organization also came in handy, though when this initiative was uh, started, he was not part of the uh, coaching team there. Okay. Some of the less principles I'm going to briefly talk about. Um, these are the 10 key principles uh, that are less based on. 
So LEDS framework is distributed in two different frameworks. One framework that specifically addresses uh, between two to eight teams and less huge framework uh, that has little more rules and guidance uh, when you have more than eight teams. And that's exactly why I wanted to know uh, that who's in the room here, okay? So I think for most of us here in the room, uh, this framework uh, pretty much can suffice the need uh, that we have. Now, less structure specifically talks about having real teams. Now, if we were to get some contractors uh, onboarded and work with the full-time employees, it wouldn't make a team because they would come and they would go. Okay, and as we know from you know uh, team-based researchers, that it takes time for a team to pass through different stages for it to become a performing team usually more than a year. So this wasn't gonna help us here. Another thing that Les talks about is having interbased teams. Teams which have ability to pick up a product feature, implement it and deliver it in its entirety without being uh, dependent on any other teams. Okay. Now that also means that if there were dependencies on the back end. Excuse me. Some database changes have to happen. APIs middle layer changes have to happen. APIs need to be rewritten or written. Uh, front end client face uh, code needs to be written. This team is able to do all of that itself. Okay. So let me let me uh, dig a little deeper into what challenges we face when we have component based teams. Not feature teams, but component-based teams. Uh, who were in, in any of the less sessions before this this morning? Sessions where less specific conversations happen, or feature team conversations happen. So let's take a scenario. We have about nine teams. Okay, uh, we are doing uh, release one of a product, and say we have three major features that we are addressing in this release. Now each of this team have ownership of one component in the entire system, okay? Now take for example feature one, it needs changes by team number one, team number four, team number five, and team number eight. So these four teams need to make four changes before feature one can be deployed, okay? So obviously as soon as we kickstart the initiative, team one is gonna start working on this feature They'll hand it off to team number four, and it's gonna pass until all this work is done. Feature one will be in progress, okay? Now while this is happening, feature two can start, okay? Now feature two um, needs team uh, work from these teams, team number one, team number four, seven, and eight. Now while team one is working on feature number one, in this case, feature number two has to wait. And as soon as team one is done with the changes for feature number one, they can now pick up feature number two, okay? And same for team number four. And say feature number three has a dependency on different components, and this these teams have to uh, make changes into the code. Now what is happening here is each team is making a part changes in the entire system to complete a feature. So there is a lot of learning. Whenever we are making any code changes, okay, uh, there is learning there. Now each team is generating some new learning, but now this learning is only focused on one component rather than serving the customer need or solving the system's problem. Okay. Now some learning that is happening in team one for feature one that needs to be passed on to team number four so that when they make changes for feature number one, they understand that why these decisions were made, what assumptions were taken, what challenges did they face, okay? Is this the best approach that team one came up with and why is that, okay? So all this learning needs to be passed on. And similarly, all the, all the respective teams need to pass this learnings to other teams 
for that team to really have good context about what all these decisions have been made so far. Yeah, these are nine teams, for example. Okay, nine different teams having ownership of nine different components. Now, let me ask you guys, how many times a component team that has made changes and passed on the ball to another team's plate shares that knowledge with them? Passes on that learning, those assumptions, those bases for decision making to the other team so that that learning is shared. Few hands up, good. What we usually see is this knowledge is not being shared consistently. Okay, so now team two has to start from fresh. I mean, these are good, capable, technical, technically competent people, so they can also make their choices. But now the only challenge is they have to start from fresh. And now their assumptions could be a little different, or their way of solving this problem could be a little different. Okay, so that challenge. Now, while team one is busy, team four is really busy, some teams have lighter workloads. Right? Some teams have no work in this release. So what is gonna happen in those teams while release one is in progress? Obviously, they are not sitting idle. Right? So they have found some other work to keep them busy. Isn't it? No team in my organization or any organization I have been to uh, was sitting idle. Okay? Which means they were doing something. But now the thing is, release one is the highest priority release for the organization for this quarter or this year. So rather we focusing all our energy effort on the highest priority, what we are doing is we are optimizing for what? People's time, yes. We are doing local optimization. What we are doing is because this team is sitting idle, what is this team's manager going to do? They're going to go and find some work and make sure that team status reports or progress reports or time sheets show that they are busy. This may not be the highest value for the organization for this release. Number one. Number two, what if when these teams are really, really busy and because of these teams are busy and timeline is critical, what is going to happen within these teams? What are the managers of these teams going to do? they are gonna start looking to hire more people so that they don't become impediments for the organization in releasing these products. Is that true? And what happens in traditional organizations? The number of people I lead, the number of, the, the amount of budget I control, what that signifies? Yeah, and who does not want that? Yeah? <laughs> So that's again, local optimization is happening at that team level. Teams that are busy, local optimization is happening here. So these teams are hiring more people, they are onboarding more people, so that more work can be, could be cranked out by these teams. Now guess what? Release one is over. Cool, great, good success. Release two starts. And now, coincidentally, release two had all of the work going from this channel. Boom, boom, here. What happens to all these large size teams? Yes, but are we gonna sit idle? No, we're not gonna sit idle. So what we are gonna do? We're again gonna find something to keep us busy. Sorry? Fix the bugs, this <laughs> could be, yeah. <laughs> Again, we are going to do the local optimization here with component teams, okay? So, component teams cause a lot of waste, okay? Actually, all of this, all of this, and a lot of it. Okay. 
I'm sure you're familiar with the seven ways of lean product development. Okay, uh, Mary and Tom Opendick have popularized this for the software context as well, making it eight. All right. So, how did we solve it? Okay, we definitely did not want component team because we were very familiar that it would be a lot of waste. Okay, and we always wanted feature based real teams. Okay, but now hiring so many people were, was not possible for us in that time. So what do we do? We identified one product initiative which was getting uh, close to finish. So we were able to negotiate and move one team, entire team, from that product group to ours. Okay, we did not pick up one person from this team, two people from that team, and one from another team. We we moved entire team because this team was a team. They knew the working agreements. They knew the process. They knew each other. And that was the asset for us. So we moved completely one team. So now we had two teams in New York. But that was not even close to what we really wanted to do. Yes. Both actually, 50-50. So one product was about to uh, wrap up, okay? Uh, and we were able to discuss with them based on the priority this product initiative had. We had to negotiate with uh, their product group and move the entire team. Okay. So we did not have component teams. Okay. Um, the point I wanted to make with the component teams is it is a lot of waste. So we did not want to have component teams. So we wanted to have feature teams. Other product, so this product, yes. Yes, definitely. Definitely the team members need to learn the new product. They need to learn um, the technical skill a little bit. But the good thing for this team was, team number two was, that they were within the organization. Okay, So they knew a lot of stuff already. They knew the team's culture, the organizational culture. They knew the engineering practices. All right, and also we were able to find a, a vendor which had worked for this company in past and able to work with them to onboard three new teams from the vendor side in Ukraine. Uh, this was in Brooklyn, New York, and the vendors were in Ukraine. Onboard three new teams with them. Okay, so how did it happen? Uh, for the first two sprints, they sent about four four of their tech lead to the New York office. And they worked with these teams as team members for two sprints, complete two sprints. So they were part of the sprint planning, they were writing the code, they were delivering, checking in, okay? They were part of the reviews. So rather than giving like a knowledge transition in a conference room, they were given access and they had to work with the team. They were equally responsible for developing, working on the stories and delivering. Okay. So we thought that was that was real critical because once they go back and they have already seen all the challenges, they have already worked on entire cycle of right from planning, picking up a story to delivering it, they will be able to share that with the new team members who join in Ukraine. Okay. So we were able to uh, get three teams. Uh, in Ukraine, okay. So we had two teams here in New York, and three in this. We still had one product owner, okay, who was responsible for all the modules, uh, making all the decisions. And we were lucky; we had really great product owner who had been working on this product for uh, a long time. So she she really knew the product very well. And still, the product backlog was single. One product backlog. We did not have multiple product backlogs. Though our product backlogs did have items from different modules. Okay, The product backlog did have items that belonged to uh, different modules. And if we were to segregate them, 
they would it would look like this. Okay. So which very conveniently helped us for the teams to pick up work related to a particular module. Now it was not like written in stone. Okay. So team members did have flexibility which one they want to pick. But they themselves identified that it would make sense for one team to really work on one module so that they really understand what are they solving for. Okay? And, and there were common components, uh, shared libraries that they were discussing all the time. That okay, who's gonna work on these? Okay, on the shared one. Okay, one scrum master for the New York teams, uh, one scrum master for the uh, Ukraine teams. Okay, another challenge. So I talked about the talent, okay, getting um, teams. Now having feature-based teams, um, if you are able to have that in place, I personally think that your half battle is won right there. Yeah. All right. Two, communication and coordination. Now this is half have, as I said, half the battle is already won when we have feature-based teams. If we had component-based teams, we had to have some people who would do coordination. We would need to have somebody who knows this and says, okay, we are working on this, this is the date we will deliver, and then when are you going to pick up, when will you deliver, so this team is ready accordingly. Somebody had to do all this coordination. Oh, you deliver a beautiful thing, but now it doesn't work for us. Okay, so back and forth. Somebody needs to coordinate. Okay. Oh, this component, that component, that component. Somebody needs to integrate everything. Who's going to do the system integration testing? Okay. So somebody needs to coordinate all this. But here, a lot of these things are already solved. So we know that a lot of projects actually fail just because they have lack of communication. They don't have good communication practices in place. Okay, And honestly, this is a very conservative number. Actual numbers could be much higher than this. Sorry? No, so there are many studies. Okay, So some studies even say 70%. I, sorry? Yes, but again, I have mentioned the source. So there are many studies done by different groups. So some group call it 70%, some group call it this one. I found this one to be more resonating with the audience. <laughs> okay, uh, We are all familiar with this, the richness of communication, face-to-face -face the best one. Okay, So how are we doing it? Wow. Okay, so that's like a two concentric circles representing a sock. So we had daily scrum in New York for the New York teams. Each team had their own daily scrum and uh, daily scrum uh, done by the Ukraine teams. Okay, They had their own daily scrums. So what were we using as a communication channels? So we had internal instant messenger, Jabber. Okay, So every single morning, uh, somebody would initiate a group chat and pull in every team member in there. So all the day, if something was uh, important, they found something useful or they uh, ran into some issue, they would just post it on the messenger chat group. Hey, who, who, who can help me here, okay? So, this one, from all of our, our documents or any information that we were writing were on the wiki. We did not deep freeze the information on a SharePoint where everybody had to come and ask for access. But this was available within the organization. Anybody can actually go and see which stories are part of the this team's sprint plan, this, this sprint, okay? Or what are the outcomes from the sprint? So it was accessible for everybody within the organization. Uh, we had the internal corporate, uh, kind of a Facebook's alternate was called Yammer. Uh, that actually helps promote a lot of good collaboration uh, within the organization. So anybody like, uh, once our director of engineering post, um, he found something and he posts on our Yammer group that hey, this is something I'm kind of um, challenged with, uh, who can address? So anybody within the organization, not necessarily part of that team, can respond back or post, hey, we already have the answer for this. 
Uh, video messaging, Skype, well, we frequently use this, especially with the Ukraine teams. Uh, we did not have any, we did not buy any electronic tools, and that's exactly why I wanted to put this slide on. Uh, the physical scrum board worked super cool for both teams um, in New York as well as in, in Ukraine. Uh, the whiteboards were all the time being used. We had so many whiteboards across the walls. Whenever team members had something to discuss, they would just get up and go and talk on the wall on the whiteboard. They would draw it. That's I, I think that's a, a very good practice that uh, teams can uh, benefit. And once in a while, we use Excel sheets. Okay, once in a while. All right, uh, the coordination now across the teams. So there were more teams now, um, and sometimes things need to be exchanged, communicated. So we had Scrum of Scrum in New York, that was daily basis. Um, about 12 representatives from different teams, now not, not only this product group, but from different product groups, would show up here for 15 minutes and discuss if they had any major impediments that were organizational level impediments. Um, any major releases coming up or some like infrastructure upgrade going on or something that's gonna be down, um, so that would be communicated so that you can go and bring in that information, share with the team that hey, this um, is gonna be, this servers or these servers are going, going to be upgraded from this to this time, don't deploy, okay? Or something like that, okay? Or we are going to launch on this, so keep an eye on it. Uh, so any team representative, team member, would usually go not your Scrum Master or not your product. You may choose to go and observe it once in a while, but ideally you would want to have a team member who's close to the action, the code, uh, usually would go and talk, uh, talk and uh, share information or exchange information with other team uh, representatives, okay? Now there was, uh, as I mentioned, completely um, opposite times, uh, 10 a.m. here, um, and the other happening at the 10 p.m., that's why it is dark, obviously. So we, we wanted some information exchange so that if the team in um, Ukraine had some questions for the engineering team, they could at least have a talk, okay? Though they were part of the uh, group messenger, okay? So group chatting, so anything that was happening in the team in the New York Times, when they log in, they come up and they see, oh, this was something was being discussed. So that was super cool. Um, they didn't have to like ask or call somebody, say, share something with me that was cool that you guys discussed, but everything was available to them, okay? So there was no kind of a employee versus contractor kind of a sh uh, uh, limitation on information exchange. Everybody had the information, okay? So usually, uh, we would once in a week, either Thursday night or some night, uh, uh, both the representatives from New York team and Ukraine team would get together and do like a weekly sync up that are we all good? Are we following good practices? Okay, is continuous integration working well? That Or if some build was broken, uh, did we do it the right way or can we find something better to do it? Okay, this was not a retrospective but a quick sync up where any, um, any things that were not addressed in the regular communication channels could be brought up and addressed. We had a steering committee meeting uh, twice a month uh, where all the risk would be discussed, uh, customer input would be discussed, uh, what are the marketing team's plans, how they are progressing, um, the infrastructure and all those things, the, the funding and all those things will be discussed. Any major impediments that we wanted to share with the leaders of the organization would be opportunity to share with them. We had a once in a month community of practice uh, gathering. Again, this is volunteer based, knowledge sharing. So you would have like scrum masters meeting with other scrum masters, architect, tech leads meeting with those, uh, Selenium guys, uh, testing community uh, meeting with the testing community, sharing good practices within the organization. If some, some team came up with like a cool library, like now we have the graphs, you, you guys can go and use it. All those things would be shared, yes. Optional, it would be a product owner's choice. If she's available, she wants to go and just listen in that where are my products, what are the big impediments, or what are the major releases coming up, she wanted to just sync up, she would go and observe. No, so if anything that was discussed within Scrum of Scrum and that had uh, 
dependency on some leader to address that, then the facilitator of the Scrum of Scrum would go and share that with the leaders. No, so the steering, good, good question, just to separate these out. Steering committee meeting was for this product group, okay, where they had five teams and everything specific to this. Whereas Scrum of Scrum is the organization wide Scrum of Scrum. Product development, uh, release management, operations, customer support, okay. So all those people will get together and share uh, any, as I said, all those things in the Scrum of Scrum. Cool, clear? Good, okay. All right, item number three. Uh, how are we doing the product reviews, okay? So we had one product increment every sprint. Despite having multiple teams, different time zones, uh, the product increment was one. So everybody was continuously checking in, okay? We did use tools for continuous integration, but eventually we had one product that was being developed and being reviewed. So when we get together for the sprint, really the tech leads would usually sync up uh, like a quick prep, kind of a 15, 20 minute check-in with all other team leads or QA leads and saying, hey, everything in place, this is working. Do we have like stub data or you know we, have, we want some account with some backend data? Is it everything in place? So if customer wants to test this thing, will we have like a complete transaction happening right from front to database and getting the response in place? So um, that would be uh, the sprint review. Usually we would have um, our customers in the sprint review. Uh, so our product owner would take a lead and show it to the customers uh, to seek the feedback. Now once in a month, we instead of going to uh, the regular team level sprint review or a product level sprint review, we would actually go for an organization wide product review bazaar where we would set up in like a whole team would set up like a booth within the organization, within the team's working area. And all the people within the organization, uh, the invited guests from obviously customer organization or potential customers, they would come and take a look at what's, what's uh, being developed, okay? So once in a month, that would be opportunity. And I think this is really, really super cool thing for any organization to do because usually team members are so busy with their product development, they, they usually don't get time to go and see what other products are being developed, what progress are they making, what modules are being developed, what impr uh, improvements that those products have done. That many times we would see that the other team have uh, come up with such a super cool like UI, um, cool uh, you know like animations and uh, so we would say hey, why not we should do that too. Or sometimes we would see some good graphs being generated by the reporting team and say, hey, could we use those too? All those things, okay? Also having broader idea about how the customer looks at it, us, okay? Now this is one thing important and less framework uh, emphasizes a lot on this, okay? Having the customer centric view. Now this also informs, educates all the team members about how the customer is going to look at us from a product offering perspective, okay? Now though we are offering, we are working on one product, but customer is buying more than one product from this organization, okay? So now customer doesn't care about which product group or line of business developed product A versus product B versus product C. They still look at this as an one organization, okay? So that, this uh, bazaar helps you bring in that kind of a shared um, knowledge and understanding within the teams. Okay. Yes, you had a question. Two weeks. Yes, please. This was every sprint, two, two weeks. Yes, that was two weeks and this would be, so you would have alternate, alternate you have one sprint review for the, with the team and then you have within the organization, the entire organization and again, the third one would be with the team and fourth one would be entire organization, okay? Yes, yes, that's right, yes. And actually that was beautiful. That is like putting your product development uh, on cruise control. Okay. 
five. But one product owner working on one product, irrespective of how many teams are working on it. New York, yes. Okay, good question. So I kind of missed that in sharing in the communication and coordination. So product owner was frequently in touch with the teams in Ukraine, okay, number one. Number two, when they were brought in to New York, okay, they worked with the team. At that time, they had good amount of knowledge sharing from product perspective with them, okay. So one person from those people, out of those four people came in. One person was working as a product owner for the Ukraine team. And they were working on completely separate modules. So they didn't have to like interact with this product owner on a daily basis as well. She was really nice. I, I said that, yes. She was very knowledgeable and she was very uh, cooperative as well. And she was respected within the organization. Okay, last point and then we will wrap up all. I'll, I'll open it for questions. Okay, so customer collaboration. So as I mentioned, this product was being developed for the school uh, students to take assessments. So now there were multiple users. So one would be your admin uh, of the school district who would make the choice of buying it or who, who would own the product actually. And then you would have teachers uh, in the schools, respective schools, who can actually initiate the assessment and see the report of the class or uh, different students or for the class. And you would have actual students who Poor guy who actually do the test, okay, assessment. So we would uh, very frequently bring in teachers from different school districts, including New York, uh, to the office. Now, one thing is that frequently teachers were anyway visiting our office for the training purposes, okay? So anytime a, a group of teachers are in the office, we would never let them go without showing our products to them and getting their feedback, okay? So that was like a free feedback for us. But also when we had the organizational wide uh, reviews, we would bring in some uh, outside uh, school visitors, uh, school uh, teachers to come and uh, review the products and give us feedback, okay? The students, the kids, okay? And fortunately, a lot of the team members were parents and their kids could also try this and give them feedback, okay? So we would usually uh, seek out team members who were willing to um, have this reviewed uh, with their kids, so we would give get the feedback from kids. Okay. We had the internal dog feeding community, which would be volunteer based uh, review of products. So we would say, hey, we have this product, who would like to test it? Okay. So people will volunteer and then we will send the bill to them and they would test it out, give the feedback. Okay. Then we had lovely customer support teams working very near and close with the team and they would always bring in valuable input from interacting with customers and give feedback to the team about what is important or what is challenging for the customers, how customers are interacting versus how we see it uh, from development perspective, okay? And wherever there were no customers available, our product owner would, would work as a proxy of our actual users and resolve queries or give the feedback. Yeah, that's it. So, are we on time? How much time we have? Okay, so I'm open for question, but if not, uh, thank you. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Yes. Correct. Yes. Definitely. So feature-based teams, um, one, one critical aspect um, from the LESS framework, okay? Now having teams, um, I think this was also discussed in uh, earlier session, that if you have a team in New York, okay, this entire team should be in that same location. You don't want to have three team members in New York and three team members supporting them from Ukraine, okay? So now the Ukraine team is independent, of the New York team and they, they are feature-based teams. So they can pick a feature, deploy it, deliver it, okay? Number one, you wanna have one product owner for the entire product group, irrespective of number of teams, okay? Now here we are talking about five, even if you had like eight teams, uh, one product owner should be able to support. So that decision-making is happening by one person, okay? Prioritization, 
uh, is happening by one person. So one, having one product, one backlog. Okay, so let's uh, again talks about having one product backlog for all the teams. So when the sprint uh, planning is happening, everything is being called based on the priority, not based on the availability. Right? What we discuss in the uh, component based team. Okay, then. Having your product reviews, uh, customers interacting with the team on product reviews. Okay, so now here what we are seeing is, product owner is not your go-to guy for all the query. Okay, so teams actually now talk to the users directly to ask the hey if we would put. The to the yes, now, now product owners only responsibility, the primary responsibility would be to prioritize. Okay, based on the organization strategy, based on the demand, the business value, and all those risk factors, but the solving of query, okay, what should go into a feature, or how would our pay now button should look like, what, uh, uh, you know, contrast, and all those, this team members directly ask the customer. Now, that also enriches the team with the rich product knowledge. Okay, so now product owner is not the bottleneck for solving all the query or approving or accepting or denying the user story acceptance. Okay, So now team members are able to directly talk with the users and get it done. Okay. Um, well, yes, that's right. But key teams are not de developing a separate product. It is one product. Sorry. Yes, it is still one product. So you can show it to a customer irrespective of where the team was or where this feature was developed. Yes, yes, you are, you, you, yes, you, you, you are very right on that, yes. And an unfortunate thing in Ukraine would be that they do, don't, they do not have those students or teachers who they can directly reach out because this was for the New York uh, users. Yes, I, I totally agree with you. Yes. So sprint planning was same as your two week scrum would have, like your uh, beginning of your sprint, half day, you would have four, four hours. So Ukraine team would do their own sprint planning, okay? When they would come into the office, they would do their own sprint planning, and they would uh, show that, okay, these are the features that we have picked up, and it would be all on one wiki. So for example, say if a team in New York, they were doing the reading module, okay? And the team in, team in Ukraine is doing the math module. Yes. So it's, it's, it's again, you know, basically going to Scrum, uh, not a good practice to compare velocity between teams. No, we, we purposely did not want to compare velocities across the team. Well, thank you. Yes, hope it was valuable. Thank you.